Are girls as good as boys at computers? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, for sure. We could pretty much do anything they could do. There yes. shouldn't be a there stereotype should, yeah, about it There shouldn't it be like a barrier between our genders just because we're that gender. It's all equal. A coder is a person that creates um, things on the computer by using a language. If I had you draw a picture or describe to me what they look like, computer science programmer, what would what would they look like? Glasses. Like my dad is that my dad goes to work in Oakland and he has a computer. He just works every day on his computer. Is that pretty cool, or is that not so cool? It's cool because I get to go down a slide in his office. Do you think it'd be fun to be a computer science person? I don't think so. Why not? Um. Because you're always on a computer, and it sometimes could get a little boring. And that image in your mind, is that a man or a woman? Man. 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 The White House released a report that there will be 1.4 million jobs that are going to be open by 2020 in the computing-related fields. And at the current rate, less than 29% of them are going to be filled by Americans, and less than 3% of that 29% are going to be women. In the next five years, this country is going to produce about three times as many jobs for software engineers as it is producing new computer science majors. this whole industry is gonna to start to run out of gas if we're not producing enough computer science talent. It's so urgent that we get more people to have the skills for coding and making because we have so many different problems to solve in the world. And the industry really needs more diversity so we can make the broad set of products that this world deserves. And I really think that this is a Rosie the Riveter moment because the jobs are here and we don't have the workers to fill them. Code. Debugging the gender gap. A program is a series of instructions. If then instruction is the real thing that separates a computer from a straightforward calculator, it can make little decisions within itself. It is the program that is the key to the computer's effectiveness and versatility. Through the program, man communicates with the machine. Uh, coding's magic. Coding is behind everything. Your pocket is full of code. It's got your phone in it. And so it's really like, coders should be everybody at this point. There's so many exciting things you can do. You can do make music, you can do fashion, you can do all kinds of things with code. code. We're kind of on the precipice of everyone being a coder. Basically, it's writing a set of instructions. And those instructions are what a computer follows. You put all those together and you have email and you have iTunes and you have all kinds of cool things. In the same way that everyone should know a little bit about law and everyone should know a little bit about economics, you probably should know a little bit about computer science. Turn right. Everything from your navigation system in your car to the way we think about credit card fraud, it's all radically changed behind the scenes. Enter your passcode. Yeah, yeah. You can combine code with anything you love and you can have a job doing it. I loved art and I loved coding and now I get to make movies. So if you take our film Brave and our main character Merida and she's got this huge head of red hair. And to make those curls move the right way, you have to consider the physics of things. There's so many different algorithms, like thousands of them that we use all the time and then you code up those equations. And then for all the shots in the movie, the code crunches the numbers and takes into account things like wind and gravity and whether Merida's climbing a mountain or riding a horse and does it brush your shoulder and all of these things. So what you get is this lovely teenager that's fiery and spirited and it sort of sells her personality and her hair moves the right way. I am Merida. Shooting for my own hand. Oh. What are you doing? I've worked at Pixar for 17 years. Um, I have a computer science degree from Harvard, but had always done a lot of art. And so kind of worked my way from technical into creative. 
For me, being a teenager, I think of it as sort of one foot being in the, the world of being a kid and one foot in the world of being an adult and figuring out who you are away from your family and sort of coming into your own, what's your voice, all those things. Merida, curse this dress! Merida, stop this! I think role models are hugely important. You're not gonna imagine you can do something unless you see someone that you can connect with that's doing the same thing. When it's a woman doing that, it's easier to make that connection. At a certain point, you realize, oh, I do actually know what I'm doing. And I'm actually pretty good at this, and I belong in this room. Gloria Steinem says that women have always been an equal part of the past, just not an equal part of history, which is the case, of course, here in computer science and technology. Women were the pioneer programmers. They've been written out of history, unfortunately, in many cases, but they were the ones who first understood that instructing the machine was more important than the hardware of the machine. One of the first women pioneers in computing was Ada Lovelace, Lord Byron's daughter. She's often considered to be the first computer programmer. Very often we trace the history of computing back to a guy named Charles Babbage, who in England in the 1820s built some machines that look like a modern computer. Ada Lovelace was a mathematician who wrote a first and very important description of Babbage's analytical engine. She really envisioned how punch cards, which instructed the mechanical looms that were driving industrial England, that they could be used by her friend Charles Babbage's difference in analytical engines so that they could do more than just numbers, they could be computers. They could do words and pictures and music and patterns. The first computers were built for special purposes breaking the German wartime codes, calculating a missile trajectory. And if you wanted to reprogram them to do another problem, you had to unplug some cables and do some switches. And the women were in charge of doing the plugging and unplugging of the cables. They'd look at the diagram of the computer and figure out how would we move the cables to reprogram it. It did not seem like the most important work, but it took a good mathematical mind. The designers thought that this would be an easy job, that the building of the machine would be the most difficult task, and then you would have a scientist who would define the problem, and these women would just be coding it. They'd be translating it from human language into machine language. It turns out that coding was quite difficult, and so these women played a very active role in defining what a computer could do. They had this equipment, and somebody had to figure out what to do with it. Well, that's always a good job to give to the women. <laughs> Do something with this. Make it, make it work. I don't think software engineering as an industry is a meritocracy. I think it's a great ideal that engineering holds itself to, but it's very far from being that. I went to the conference in October of 2013, and in there listening to a few people speaking about you know, the lack of women, how bad the numbers were, how the numbers were declining, but nobody was talking about the actual numbers that they had or whether any of these tactics that they were deploying were helping with the numbers. And so when I came back from the conference, I issued this call to action that people could count up the number of female software engineers as well as total software engineers within their companies and submit it to this project and we could aggregate it into one place. Before, it was more or less an open secret that diversity was a problem within tech, but when companies started putting these numbers out there with full diversity disclosure reports, it became very obvious for people outside the industry to look at those and say, wow, there really is a problem. This is something that we need to be focusing on and trying to address.
it's not a pretty picture. If you look at the different paths that, that computer scientists take, essentially the proportion of women just successively shrinks at every stage. So however few CS majors there are, there are even fewer software engineers. There become even fewer very senior software engineers, even fewer founders of companies. We have got to figure out a way to make the pipeline of tech talent more robust. And in order to do that, we have to look at communities that until this point have really been overlooked and underutilized. This means that we have to ensure that people of color are part of this tech talent pipeline. We have to ensure that women and girls are part of this tech talent pipeline. We have to ensure that we're looking in all corners and crannies of the nation to make sure that we're reaching people People who have the talent, need the skill, need the context for being able to succeed. I don't believe coding can be the great equalizer because there's so many things that we have to fix. But it is a medium towards equality. Good morning. How are you doing? We believe that the reason that there's a gap is actually related to some really real structural factors. Part of that is people's ability to like step away from their life to like learn this skill. <laughs> All right, so welcome back. We had a big week last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff. I actually worked in social justice work and community organizing and activism for, for a lot of years. And one of the things I found is that I kept hiring really smart women, people of color, et cetera, to the same kind of low-level jobs when really they had fantastic ideas about tech and how we could do what we were doing much better. I built a lot of our own software and tech on the fly just because I had a programming background. And I thought we should do something about that situation. And that the folks that all of this kind of work is trying to reach out to, the communities it's trying to impact, those people should be the people who are making decisions and making tools and being part of the actual design rather than just the users and consumers of technology. Code is mobility. And, you know, racial minority groups, women, poor folks have always fought to have access to those conduits towards power. Computer science should be a requirement in all U.S. public schools and charter schools and private schools, but we're paying our tax dollars. And as an employer, I'm not getting what I need from U.S. public schools because computer science is not being taught. The biggest problem we have is equipping enough teachers of computer science because it has not been required or even present. We do not have enough teachers who are trained to, um, to teach the curriculum. Schools can be technology rich, but curriculum poor. And that what is really needed is the curriculum and the teachers and the opportunities to experiment and explore with the technology. Most students have no exposure to programming um, as a young person. And I think that if it was done well and part of the curriculum, really creating technology, innovating, giving them the tools that they actually can create things that are meaningful and relevant to their lives could have these other really positive effects. People think that it's a specific subject when it's actually part of everything. It can be part of history, it can be part of English, it can be part of, of all of your subjects. Of course we want to teach kids to read and to write, to express themselves, but we never let them express themselves in a mathematical, scientific way. So they need to be able to make things, they need to be able to do innovation, engineering, coding. That's all part of expression in the technical realm.